What's up, everybody? Welcome to part two of my top 100 favorite music artists. And um, we are now from 75 to 51. So, all right. Um, all right, let's waste no time. Let's go ahead and get started. So, coming at number 75, we have a heavy metal band, a pretty popular heavy metal band, I, I would say. Actually, yeah. Yeah, very popular, uh, especially in the 90s. And um, and they're actually back together, although I don't really think that's a good idea because the two dudes that started the band are dead. But anyways, that's Pantera. Uh, yeah, yeah, they got back together. Uh, Phil Anasomno, or whatever his name is, and Rex Brown. Now they're with, like, Zach Wilde. And I think, is it Charlie Benant... Bennett Benante, whatever his last name is, uh, from Anthrax. I think that's the drummer. Or is it Dave Lombardo? No, no, it's not Dave. I think it's Charlie, but, um, but anyways, yeah, the Anthrax drummer. But, um, but, yeah, like, I think that's kind of weird. Uh, like, why? I, I don't know. But, anyways, but, yeah, um, but Pantera, though, really awesome heavy metal band from the 90s. I mean, I already mentioned Phil, who is an amazing heavy metal singer. Not really the best person. He's kind of a questionable dude. Um, but but he is a great front man and awesome heavy metal singer, Rex Brown. And uh, he also had the um, the Abbott brothers, Vinnie Paul and... Um, and uh, Dimebag Daryl, who unfortunately are both no longer with us. I mean, everybody knows, I think, the tragic death of of Dimebag, where he got murdered on stage at, um, wasn't even a Pantera show. It was actually a uh, damage plan, uh, which the Abbott brothers were in. But, um, but that was like back in 2004, and then, um, and then later... Years later, Vinnie Paul, his brother, died. I uh, think of a heart attack, like in, uh, I want to say 2018, 2017, 2018, something like that. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, sucks that they're no longer with us. And I honestly wish that Phil and Rex would have just left the band alone because it was the Abbott Brothers band, not theirs. But,. But never, nevertheless, Pantera is still an awesome band, a uh, great heavy metal band from the 90s, and my personal favorite song by them is Mouth for War. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Pantera, awesome band, and they're my number uh, 75. Okay, coming at number 74, we have a band that you might have never heard of. They were very influential on Nirvana, and Nirvana covered... A bunch of their well uh, three of their songs actually um yeah Kurt Cobain really liked them uh that is uh a Scottish band by uh yeah um the Vaselines the Vaselines really cool band from Scotland uh and they're actually still around to today um I mean I think they broke up but then got back together and they've released at least I think like two albums last deck in the last decade but, um, but yeah, what I've heard from this band, I, I enjoy very much. They're, they're really cool. Um, if you like alternative rock, check out the Vaselines, like, especially if you like Nirvana, uh, cause they covered, um, Jesus doesn't want me for Sunbeam and Molly's lips and my personal favorite Vaseline song, uh, son of a gun, uh, which I actually prefer the Vaseline's version of that though. The, Rather than the, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the Nirvana version, but the Vaseline's version is awesome. But yeah, Vaseline's, uh, they're my number 74. Okay, coming in at number 73, uh, we have a uh, shoegazing, shoegaze band, uh, that is uh, My Boy Valentine. This band is pretty fucking for a for a band that's not heavy metal, this band is pretty heavy, actually. <laughs> like, it's crazy how heavy they sound when they're not even heavy metal. Like, their music not even close to being heavy metal, but they still have, like, that heavy distortion. Um, 
in a lot of their songs. Uh, there's one song in particular called Slow, where in the background they have this really heavy distortion going on um, with like this um, mellow melody going on with the vocals, and it's just crazy. Um, really good song, though. That's not my favorite, though. My favorite is actually uh, Sometimes really awesome song and that was actually in uh uh the movie um was it uh lost in translation that was in that movie and that's where i first heard it and i was like wow that's a great song um but yeah my Billy valentine really cool band and they're my number 73 okay coming in at number 72 we have a very popular band a very popular rock band that a lot of people love. There's probably some people that don't like them too. Actually, I think I met someone who didn't, he said he he hated them or something. Um, but um, you know, um, love them or hate them, I think I think they're great. They're very talented, very creative. One of the most uh, influential rock bands today. I think everybody knows them. That is, of course, Pink Floyd. Yeah, now, okay, one thing I will say about Pink Floyd, I don't think they're overrated, because obviously I like them because they're on this list. However, I do think that they've made the most overrated album ever. Yeah, Dark Side of the Moon, I think that album is not even that good, to be honest. And I don't, like, if people didn't like it, the fine but the fact that people say that it's one of if not the greatest album ever made and i listen to it and i'm like no no it's not and then like i've heard some whenever i say that i've heard some people say well you should have been there back in 1973 it was a game changer man something like that and i'm like who gives a shit it's it's a boring ass album and it's just and it's not even close to being their best album. This may be their best, but The Wall is ten times better. Wish You Were Here is better. Even an album that I have heard from them, uh, Uma Guma, which is a really bizarre album. But that album is even better than Dark Side of the Moon. The best songs from Dark Side of the Moon is not even their best songs. Like Time and Money and The Great Gig in the Sky, which that might be the best one on there, but... I don't consider those to be the best pink some of the best Pink Floyd songs. They're just decent songs, but like yeah, I <laughs> But aside from that, I still think they're a great band. Um very creative, very uh interesting, ahead of their time, uh, but also very influential and you know, it's there's a reason why they're considered to be the best. I just wish Dark Side of the Moon wasn't uh, or one of the best. And I just wish Dark Side of the Moon wasn't considered to be the best. if it, Or one of the best. Like, no. No. It, it, Dark Side of the Moon kind of sucks. I, I said it. But Pink Floyd doesn't suck, though. They're, they're a cool band. Um, and yeah. A uh, personal favorite song from them is uh, Fearless. Which is uh, a pretty underrated track uh, from... Uh, I think it's Metal, I think is the name of that album. But um, yeah, that song is really cool. Very folky, but I love it. Um, yeah, Pink Floyd, they're my number 72. Coming at number 71, another British band. Uh, but this is a punk rock band. And this band's pretty big, especially for punk rock. Uh, that would be The Damned. Uh, Damned is really a really awesome band. They got cool songs like neat 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 and love song and new rose and my personal favorite is smash it up that song is one of my all-time favorites now it is so cool um i did kind of wish that that song wasn't the closing track of that album i actually think it would have been better if it was a if, if it was an opening track and i know it's in like split up into two parts like the first part is just instrumental it's just like an instrumental um, like, yeah, it's just like an instrumental intro, and then part two is the actual song, but I consider both to be as one, and it's just, 
the whole thing is just great. Um, but yeah, but yeah, the damned is a cool band. Um, and, um, yeah, I like them a lot. They're my number 71. Okay. Coming on number 70, we have a solo artist, very influential. Um, and he has a very unique voice and like his music is really weird and interesting. I think when he started out, it was a little normal, like it was just normal, like blues folk music. But then in the eighties, he started to experiment uh, with his music and it was, it, it was very interesting. Uh, and he has a weird voice, but, but yeah, that, that would be uh Tom Waits. Tom Waits is, is a, like I said, a very interesting fellow in music. Um, I dig him a lot, though. I I don't like everything I've heard, but then again, he has like a lot of albums and a bunch of songs, so I haven't heard everything. But I like a, most of what I've heard from him, and it's he's just he's very talented, a uh, weird singer, like I said, and um, yeah. Um, Actually, what got me into him, well, first of all, I actually got this CD, uh, Mule Variations. I got this album before I even became a Tom Waits fan. I didn't become a Tom Waits fan until I started watching um, Jim Jarmusch's films. Who Jim Jarmusch is a very great director. Uh, I recommend his films. And... He actually puts Tom Waits in his films. He's, I think, good friends with Tom Waits, and Tom Waits started acting because of Jim Jarmusch, and um, he's in like movies like um, Down by Law and um, and Coffee and Cigarettes. And his and I remember when I first saw Down by Law, which yeah, he's in the movie. He's one of the lead characters in it. Um, the opening started with. Um, which happens to be my personal favorite song from him, uh, Jockey Full of Bourbon. And I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. And I loved how it was used to. And also another good song I really like, which I actually heard it from a, uh, I think it was the first Tom Waits song I ever heard, but I never knew it was Tom Waits until much later. But um, it was it was Underground, the song Underground. And that was actually in... A um a kids movie I used to love, uh called Robots and um and then when I started listening to Tom Waits and I heard that song I'm like oh shit that's that awesome song from Robots because I I loved that song as a kid actually, and um, but yeah Tom Waits is really cool really weird but really cool very influential like I said and also a little known fact he was the voice of Tommy the Cat in the Primus song. In case you don't know, and more on Primus later, but but yeah, um, in fact, Primus is even on this CD. I think only on one track, but uh, big in Japan. But anyways, but yeah, Tom Waits is awesome, and he is uh, my number seventy. Okay, coming at number uh, sixty nine, we have a very underrated '90s band. I think they're mostly just known for one song and even one album, but I still think the album itself was kind of considered to be an underrated uh, 90s rock album. But, um, but yeah, um, that would be The Toadies. Yeah, uh, Toadies, uh, I think most people would know uh, Possum Kingdom, which I think still to this day gets played on rock radio, if I'm not mistaken. And it is a great song, don't get me wrong. I, I do like Possum Kingdom. I don't think it's their best song, but... But it's it's a it's a still a great song and this album uh, their debut Rubberneck, awesome album, underrated '90s album, and um, I really like uh, what's his name Todd Lewis. Uh, he has a great voice and um, and they're kind of similar to the Pixies, but um, but they're also like their own thing too. Uh, but. But the Pixies were definitely a big influence on them, you could tell. Um, but yeah, Toadies is a great band, and this album, Rubberneck, is amazing. And my personal favorite song by them is actually the closing track on here, I Burn. I've, I've recently, I mean, I always like that song, but just recently I've been really digging into that song, and I'm like, damn, that's amazing. Um, 
But yeah, I uh, or Toadies, number 69. Okay, coming in at number 68, we have another solo artist and a very popular solo artist, very influential, much like Tom Waits, but I would say this guy's even more popular in music. Um, that would be Bob Dylan. Yeah, Bob Dylan, just a great folk rock um, singer-songwriter. Um, he might not be the best singer. I've heard some people say they, they don't like his voice. I, I get it, but at the same time, I don't know. He, he's okay. I don't really like how he sounded like, I think it was the 80s and 90s. I didn't really like how his voice sounded then. But um, but in the 60s and 70s, I, I think he was... I think his voice, at least it, it fitted the music so that he was doing. But yeah, just a great, great songwriter and um, just, you know, one of the most influential um, uh, guys in folk and folk music in general, really, not just folk rock, but folk music. And um, and yeah, uh, Bob Dylan's great. And uh, per, my favorite from him is a uh, girl from the North Country. And it's actually the uh, duet he did with Johnny Cash, not the original version, but yeah, the duet. Uh, I love that song; it's so good. Um, yeah, Bob Dylan, he's my number sixty-eight. Okay, coming in at number sixty-seven. I think this is the first, uh, if I'm not mistaken, unless you can't like Rage Against the Machine from the last one, but that they're more rap rock. But this is the, the first like rap artist I think I have on here and i got a few others too i do like some rap music um and this group is pretty awesome um but yeah my number 67 is a uh, public enemy yeah chuck d flavor flav awesome dudes uh terminator x as well um <laughs> um just an awesome rap group um i mean what more can i say um, just listen to the song Fight the Power, which, uh, and that it was used very well in the opening of Do the Right Thing. Um, not my favorite by them, though, but that is a great song. Uh, my favorite by them is actually Brothers Gonna Work It Out from, uh, is it Fear of a Black Planet? Yeah. And, um, but yeah, Polygon Again Me is awesome. I, I still need to listen to them a little more. I haven't really heard, like, any other albums, but just of what I've heard, um, my cousin Cade, who you knew from the Cousins of Critics podcast, he, he, he's really into them and he showed me, uh, a few songs I haven't heard before. I'm like, shit, man, this band is fucking awesome. Um, there's, I think th three more rap groups I like better. I don't know if I have a solo rapper, like a rapper on this list. I don't think I do, but I have some groups, some more groups on here. Um, but, but yeah, Public Enemy, uh, they're my number 67. And coming at number 66, now, okay, now this guy is very influential to rap music, although he's not a rapper, um, but he, uh, but, his music gets sampled a lot in rap music and um and he is uh the king of funk that would be james brown yeah james brown is that dude has had an amazing voice he was you know um his dance moves were amazing as well i mean he influenced michael jackson when it came to dancing maybe even his voice too but but definitely um when it came to his dancing, yeah, if it wasn't for James Brown, you wouldn't have Michael Jackson, so there's that, um, but, but James Brown, he, he was a weird dude, like, his personality and all that is weird, he was pretty strange, but, but his music was awesome, and, um, and yeah, my favorite from him is, uh, Super Bad, awesome song, yeah, uh, James Brown is my number 66, and then um, at, six, at coming at number sixty five, we have a, a another heavy metal group. Although this was, you could say, is more like alternative metal, and maybe even new metal. And this band has even been they've even been called the uh, Radiohead of heavy metal. Um, I don't think I, no, I haven't said Radiohead yet. They'll 
they'll be later. But, but, um, but yeah, my number 65 is Deftones. Um, yeah, Deftones, I was really into them back in high school. Uh, I remember listening to Saturday Night Wrist once because I, I remember getting that from, uh, my ex-brother-in-law, uh, I had, um, I put it on my, uh, on my, on my iPhone and I was, and I was listening to it. I remember in school, uh, Saturday Night Riz, I'm like, holy shit, this is amazing. Um, and I don't have all their albums. I, I don't even have Light Pony or Around the Fur, but I have like their debut Adrenaline and Diamond Eyes. And I have this B-Sides of Rarities album too, which is actually my favorite of what I own by them. I, I, I need to get Saturday Night Wrist as well. I really like that album a lot because that was the one that got me into them. But um, but Deftones is a is a really good band. Chino Moreno, or uh, I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, but he's a great singer. Um, yeah, Deftones. Oh, personal favorite. Personal favorite song from them is a uh, a actually a deep cut from Saturday Night Wrist. That would be Beware. Like, I think that was even the song that got me into them, and it's still my personal favorite by them. It's such a good song. Um, but yeah, uh, Deftones, uh, they're my number 65. Coming in at, uh, no, I don't have a CD from them. Uh, but coming in at number 64, another punk band, another British punk band like The Damned, that would be, uh, The Buzzcocks. Um, weird, <laughs> weird name for a band, I know, but, uh... But Buzzcocks are, they're really good. They're a little more pop punk um, than The Damned, but I don't know. I like them a bit better. They're just catchier and just really cool. I think a lot of people have heard their song, uh, was it, uh, excuse me, um, Ever Fallen in Love with Someone You Shouldn't Have or whatever it's called, um, which was actually a cover of it was in Shrek 2. So I think most people have heard that song. But um, but yeah, cool band, awesome band. My personal favorite from them is Why Can't I Touch It, which has one of the, one of the coolest bass lines ever. Um, but yeah, um, Buscox are number 64. And then coming at number 63, we have another punk band, but this time an American punk band. And this one, this is a little bit different for punk. Uh, these guys were were like pioneers of the of of uh, grunge, actually, and even like sludge metal, which uh, which is what Melvins call themselves. But um, but that would be Flipper. Flipper is a very interesting punk band like it's punk but it's slowed down and i've heard that like whenever their first album came out um a, the punk scene hated them because they were just too slow and but i i dig them a lot they're really really cool um nirvana was really into them kurt cobain himself was really into them uh and Melvin's as well. Like I mentioned, uh, they covered a, cu a few of their songs. And um, they're just a really cool band. Even Chris Novoselic from Nirvana was actually a member of Flipper a little later in the career. But that that was pretty cool. He played bass with them. But yeah, Flipper, very underrated punk band and just underrated band in general. And if you, especially if you like punk music, you might not like them, but I, I do at least recommend checking them out. Now, if you like grunge music or, in, or you feel like the Melvins, definitely check them out for sure. Uh, their first album, especially generic, check that album out. Favorite song from them is I saw you shine, which has an amazing bass line. And I've, um, I've been playing that on my bass actually, um, lately, but yeah, flipper number 63. Coming at number 62, uh, we have a band that um, was originally a side project of Blur, and then I think it later became Damon Alburn's like, um, main band, weirdly enough, because he's actually been more active with this band than he has with Blur. But, um, but that would be Gorillaz, um, and Gorillaz are more popular than Blur. But 
Some people might not like that I have gorillas over Blur. I'm sorry, because I know they're more popular, more mainstream, and you might think they're overrated. I don't, but what can I say? I love gorillas. I think, I just, I don't know. Gorillas music just connects with me more. And, um, and Damon Alburn, uh, you know, very talented dude. And I think it's really cool that he made this band. I mean, it's basically just him, but also the dude who, uh, who actually, I think did the tank girl comics, uh, Jamie Alexander. I don't know if that's right, but he, um, he does the course, uh, he did the, uh, he created the characters or at least, you know, designed them. And that's another thing. The, um, the fictional band members, the, that's pretty awesome. I love them. 2d there's 2d Murdoch noodle and, um, Russell. Yeah. The drummer. Yeah. Um, I think it's really cool that like, a lot of people don't even know that Damon Alburn is the actual member of the band. You know, they 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 just uh, you know know the the fictional members, but it's still pretty cool. And there's like a, even a whole backstory of them and whatnot. Yeah, I I like that a lot. That's that's really cool. Um, but yeah, Gorillas. Um, um, I dig them a lot. And my personal favorite from them is a uh, Dare which is from this album. Really awesome song. And, uh, yeah, that, that's um, my number 62 is Gorillaz. Coming at number 61, we have a band that, um, this is Mike Patton's band. Not Faith No More, and unfortunately I don't have Faith No More on this list. I, I do like Faith No More. I do think they're a cool band. Um, that's not one of my personal favorites, at least at the moment. I just haven't really heard them enough to say, you know, they're one of my favorite bands. However, this band I have heard a lot. Um, I grew up listening, at least the first album, especially I, I did and, and their third as well a little bit, but, um, but this is, um, maybe Mike Patton's first, or at least he was in this band before he was in, um, Faith No More. That'd be, um, that would be Mr. Bungle. Mr. Bungle, and I know it's kind of a weird name for a band, but, um, but they are a weird band. So, <laughs> but Mr. Bungle is a very interesting, um, and unique, uh, they started out as like a funk metal band. Their first album's very funk metal, but mix in with other genres too. Their first album is, I love it. It's one of the albums that, changed my life when i first heard it i couldn't believe what i was hearing and i still love that album to this day the other two albums after that one i haven't heard was it called disco volante i haven't heard that one all the way through but i did hear california as well um those are a little more just on the experimental side and then you have uh the fourth album which is not bad at all uh that was it like the the rage of the Easter bunny or something. I don't know. Something, something to do with the Easter bunny, but that one, uh, that one, I wouldn't call a Mr. Bungle album. It's only three members of Mr. Bungle, including Mike Patton with Scott Ian from Anthrax and, uh, Dave Lobardo from Slayer, who I kind of mentioned earlier. I got him confused with the Anthrax, uh, drummer, but, um, but, that's what that album is, and that's more just a heavy metal album, which is cool, but, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily call that Mr. Bungle. So, I don't know. Like, when I do the Mr. Bungle ranking, I will include that one, but most likely that will probably be my least favorite, but, but still a really cool band. Personal favorite from them is Carousel. Um, but yeah, check out the first Mr. Bungle album. If you're into heavy metal, but if you like some weird metal bands like Primus and, and even Faith No More, check out Mr. Bungle. They're, they're <laughs> you might not like them and that's understandable, but they're pretty cool. So yeah, number 61 is Mr. Bungle. Coming at number 60, we have a very popular band from the, uh, seventies and eighties, um, they were very big in the new wave scene, and that would be Blondie. Um, now, 
everyone I think knows Debbie Harry and you know for good reason she's awesome she has a great voice she's gorgeous um, and she's just a badass front woman but that's the thing I think a lot of people especially back then in the 80s didn't realize that Blondie was an actual band they just thought that it was like a solo uh, like you know they just thought that Debbie Harry was called Blondie herself because she's blonde obviously and um and you know some might might have thought that she had a backing band but they didn't think that that was the actual band but if you look at their their album covers they're on the um, at least most of them they're on the album with her so so yeah you know um and and they're all and the rest of them are all dudes there's i know there's chris stein and clem burke those are two i i know by name the others i'm not I, I don't really know, but, um, but, but yeah, Blondie is a great band. I mean, I mean, a big reason is because of Debbie Harry. That is true, but also they, they're a great band anyways, even, you know, with or without her. I mean, they definitely, I don't, they definitely want to make it if it wasn't for her, but cause that's why they are popular, but you know, uh, but, but still an awesome band. Uh, and, um, Favorite by them is actually uh well it's it's one of their biggest songs but I don't think a lot of people realize it's a cover that'll be hanging on the telephone originally by a band that I don't think really anybody has heard of I never heard of them until I found out that it was a cover but a band called the Nerves and I, I did hear the original by the Nerves and I, it's not bad um but the Blondie version's much better and that's my favorite by them. But yeah, I, I need to get their albums. I just have the best of CD, um, which only has ten songs on it. But, but, um, but Bl- Blondie's a great band. Love Debbie Harry, and uh, yeah, they're um, my number sixty. Okay, coming at number fifty nine, we have a band who a lot of people call grunge. Uh, they maybe they are. I don't know, but they they uh like. They're not in the big four grunge, but they a lot of people would consider this to be like the fifth best grunge band of the nineties. Uh, like they're definitely the most like the fifth most popular grunge band. And they were a band that I was more into as a teenager. I still like them, obviously, because they're on this list. Uh, but but uh, I don't like them as much as I did as a teenager. But still, um, but that would be uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Um, Particularly, I like this album, which is the third, Tiny Music, and I like the second album, Purple. And um, I, I did hear number four and the other one after that. They're, they were okay. And I used to like Core. I don't anymore, to be honest. Uh, aside from a few songs on there, like Wicked Garden's good uh, and and Dead and Bloated and Creep. But I hate Plush, honestly. That song sucks. <laughs> that is, in my opinion, even their worst song, even though it's their most popular song. Plush sucks. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm not into core. That one's a little more hard rock rather than, like, alternative or grunge even. Um, but then when they got to purple, that's when shit got good. And... Tiny Music's my favorite, but Purple's a great album too, and even Scott Weiland, uh, rest in peace to him, I should say. But um, but he even like originally he kind of sounded like Eddie Vedder on on Core, and I'm so glad that he decided to change his voice. Pretty much, like you listen to Core and then you listen to Tiny Music, it does not sound like the same singer at all, but it is. Um, but that proves that he he was a fantastic singer, uh, Scott Weiland, and he also, of course, got the DeLeo brothers, uh, who um, who made the band themselves, really, um, and they're both very talented, uh, Dean and uh, Robert, and um, and the drummer Eric Kretz is really good too, um, and they're still around to this day with a new singer. Uh, I haven't really heard them. I don't know. I mean, I will whenever I do my ranking, but. I, aside from that, I don't really have any interest, but, but I do think, you know, Purple and Tiny Music, I think are fantastic albums, so for those albums alone, and, 
And the fact that, you know, I used to listen to them a lot anyways, I, I decided to put them on here, and they're a little higher than I thought they would be, so... Because the stuff I like from from them, I really dig, you know? Um, I think Interstate Love Song is an amazing song, and maybe they're... I said Plush is their most popular. That might be... I don't know. It's kind of debatable. Like, I... I hear plush more than I hear Interstate Love Song, unfortunately, so I kind of consider that to be more popular. But I love Interstate Love Song. Um, and my personal favorite from them is uh, from this album. That would be uh, Trippin' on a Hole in a Paper Heart. <laughs> that song is amazing. Um, but yeah, um, SCP, Stone Temple Pilots, they're, they are uh, my number uh, 59. Alright, I'm going to get a quick drink of coffee. Okay, all right, coming at number 58, speaking of a band I was really into in, um, or as a teenager, um, like I was really into this band in middle school, especially, in high school too, but middle school especially, I was super into this band, like used to Nirvana was my favorite band, but this was my second favorite band after Nirvana, and they're even, they're not even the same as Nirvana either. Um, but they were very popular in the nineties and they still are popular to this day. They're still, they're still doing stuff. Um, I haven't really heard too much late, uh, like the newer stuff I, I've heard. I haven't really liked all that much, but they're a heavy metal band. They're a new metal band. And, um, and they were like, I much like what Nirvana did to the grunge scene. I think this band pioneered the new metal scene, That'd be, uh, that'd be corn. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of people that don't like corn. I get it. I understand. Um, but I like corn. I, I, even to this day, I still do. Um, their early stuff is the best. Is, is, you know, I think their first, like, four albums are really good. And especially their first. Their first album is amazing. I love the production on this album and just how heavy and aggressive it is. It, and the lyrics are dark as fuck, but still, it's it's it still works. Um, like, the song Daddy is, like, probably the most fucked up song I ever heard in my life. But, but it works with the music. And Jonathan Davis, an amazing singer, amazing heavy, not just amazing heavy metal singer, but just an amazing singer in general. All the other guys are fantastic as well. Um, but, yeah really awesome heavy metal band i don't love every single thing that they've done i haven't heard all their albums but i've heard a good handful uh even after the first four i've heard a few others um i thought see you on the other side was a pretty good album uh but um but i don't think any of them beats the first one however my personal favorite is not even from this album it's actually from the third album fall the leader and that would be the opening track it's on that song kicks ass. That is like one of my favorite heavy metal songs ever. And it, it's amazing. Um, now this band's not my favorite new metal band. If you would consider my favorite to be new metal. I don't know. I don't think the band themselves really consider. But people call them new metal. They're, they're, they came around the same time. So whatever. I don't think they're in this part though. Uh, they're at yeah, they'll they'll be in the second part, but but still, I love Corn, um, and they are my number fifty eight. Okay, coming at number fifty seven. Now this is one of the most interesting bands on this list. Um, this band was around the same time with Sonic Youth. Um, in fact, Thurston Moore of Sonic Youth was actually the first bass player of this band. And they, they're very interesting. Um, like, I don't know how to describe their music. It's like, I don't even know. I mean, <laughs> there's only one genre that comes to mind. I would say like avant-garde rock, basically. Although I think nowadays they're kind of called like post-rock or something like that. Like they're kind of like, um, what's that one band? Um, godspeed you black emperor kind of except they have vocals though but my number 57 um this is one of uh shout out to um 
Anthony Fantano. This is one of his favorite bands. Um, that'd be Swans. Yeah, Swans, they're very interesting, very unique, ahead of their time, pretty weird too, but in a different way, like, I don't know. But what I find fascinating about them is actually the later stuff. I mean, the older stuff is very weird and interesting, but the later stuff is so much different. Like, whenever they broke up in the 90s, but then they came back like in 2010 or so, um, and that's whenever I think they were starting to be more popular. But like I think the only recurring member, like I think the rest of the dudes were like all newer guys. But the, only the the leader, uh, Michael Jira or whatever his name is, he was like the only one, and still I think the only one that uh, this band has had a lot of members actually. But and there's like currently like seven or eight members or something like that uh but but yeah it's like the music is so much different from from uh the older stuff and i find that fascinating i find that very unique like that a band that you know were gone for a long time came back but they decided you know what let's do something different let's not sound like what we used to sound um it's still interesting and weird maybe not as much but it's still you know it's still different and um and they have a lot of like really long songs too like around like 30 minutes it's crazy um but but yeah swans are very interesting i i dig them i haven't heard everything by them because they have a lot of songs and a lot of albums but but they're really cool um Personal favorite from them is uh, Love Will Save You. That song is really cool. I love how Michael Jira's voice sounds in that one. And that's just such a cool song. Um, but yeah, Swans, uh, they're my number 57. And um, I'm going to pause this real quick because I need to go to the bathroom. So I'll be right back. All right, coming in at number 56, we have a very popular band from the 90s. Um and they are an Irish band, that'd be uh, the Cranberries. Yeah, uh, rest in peace to um, Dolores uh, O something. I forgot. I, I can't remember her last name for sure, but Dolores, rest in peace to her. She she was an amazing singer, absolutely fucking beautiful too, and had a beautiful voice, and, um, and yeah, I love her, and God, it sucks that she's gone. It really does. But, but, um, but awesome 90s band. Uh, I think she was what really made that band. But, you know, so great band, anyways. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Linger. Uh, Zombie, although I've heard that song a lot, I still think that's a pretty awesome song. Uh, my favorite, though, is actually, it's, um, it's Ode to My Family, but, it's actually the uh, demo version of it, which is called Song to My Family. And I think that version is actually even... I think that one's actually ten times better than the um, than the uh, studio version. Like, that just popped up on my Pandora once. And I'm like, this is so much better. Uh, it's just... It's so good. Um, but, yeah, really cool band. Really good alternative rock band from Ireland who unfortunately uh the lead singer has left us from cancer i think and yeah but yeah it sucks but um great band they'll be remembered forever uh and yeah they're my number 56 the cranberries okay we have i think five more i believe so all right and then this is getting kind of long but I'll, all of these are gonna be long but I'll, I'll try to i'll try to speed things up best i can Okay, so coming at number 55, we have a, a very weird band with a weird name. Like every time I mention this to someone who like, I know that doesn't know who this band is, they'll be like, <laughs> what kind of name is that? Um, yeah, that would be the Butthole Surfers. Um, yeah, Butthole Surfers. Very influential. I know I say that word 
uh, a lot, but I'm, I'm that's just a big word for this uh, list because a lot of these bands are influential. But a very influential um, band from started from the eighties, uh, early eighties actually, from Texas, and they um, started out doing punk music, but very strange punk music. Um, and they they've experimented a lot throughout their career. I have actually heard all their studio albums because I did almost do a album ranking, but then something went wrong. Uh, think, oh yeah, that was when my old laptop uh, it it actually stopped as soon as I finished the uh, buttholes the last butthole surfers album, and um, and it it just like my old laptop stopped working, so I never got to do that ranking. I guess I'll redo it though. I have to listen to those albums again, but and it, I had to be honest, that last album kind of sucked. <laughs> Not gonna lie, We Are Revolution. That album sucks. The rest of their studio albums I do enjoy though. They're pretty cool. Uh, the only one I have is Electric Larry Land, which is not my favorite. I think my favorite is probably, of what I remember, I think it was uh, the one before this one, uh, Independence Worm Saloon. I think that one was my favorite. And um, also, Locust Abortion Technicians are really, that, I think that's maybe their most popular album. Unless you count this one, because this has their most popular song, Pepper. But, um, but yeah, um... Uh, but anyways, I lost my train of thought there, but, but Bubble Surfers, they're a very strange band with a strange name, and, um, yeah, um, Gibby Haynes, there's Gibby Haynes, there's Paul Leary, um, Teresa Taylor, who was in, uh, the movie Slacker, and she died, unfortunately, uh, rest in peace to her, King Coffee, I think was a... It was her and King Coffee at one point were the two drummers. And also Jeff Pincus, the uh, bass player who I actually met once. Um, yeah, I met him at a, uh, at a, it was on my 20th birthday when I got to go see um, the Melvins because he was playing with them. And right before the show, I, we, um, me and my brother and my sister-in-law actually got to meet him. And that was really cool. Um, didn't really talk to him very much. Uh, my brother talked to him a little bit, but uh, I didn't really say much to him. I, I did shake his hand, though, and I was just, I was just so nervous and starstruck. Um, even though at that time I didn't really know exactly who he was. I knew he was in the Melvins. I knew he was in the Ball Surfers. And that was before I listened to Ball Surfers. But, but it was still awesome because... I, um, because while well, I still am a huge Melvins fan, so it was cool to actually meet a member of the band who I was going to see that night. So that that was awesome. Uh, but but yeah, Butthole Surfers, um, really weird band, but I I dig them a lot. And my personal favorite from them is uh, from the album Locus Abortion Technician. That'd be Human Cannonball. Awesome punk song by them. And yeah, Butthole Surfers are my number fifty five. Okay, coming at number 54, we have one of the big four grunge bands. Uh, we already had Soundgarden. Unfortunately, uh, Pearl Jam is not going to be on this list. So we're, we're down to Nirvana and Alice in Chains, and it is the band I have on my shirt. Alice in Chains, yes. Um, I love this band ever since middle school. Uh, Lane Staley was an amazing singer. Uh, Jerry Cantrell is an awesome guitar player. Um, and they're still, still around to this day. I think the guy who replaced, uh, Lane Staley, he, he's pretty good actually. Um, he sounds kind of similar to him, but he, he's good though. Um, Mike Inez is a great bass player and Sean Kenny, who I actually share a birthday with, um, <laughs> believe it or not. But, um, but yeah, great drummer as well. Just a really cool grunge band, but they also have like some heavy metal um, influences as well. Even folk influences, like they've released two like acoustic EPs that are kind of more on the folk side. Sap and Jar of Flies, which I need to get those. But um, but uh, Dirt is their best album. I love this one. Um, one of the albums that changed my life. 
awesome band, awesome album. Favorite song by them is uh, from Dirt. So that'll be Junkhead. Really cool song. Um, yeah. Allison Chains uh, are my number 54. And then coming at number 53. Now, this band I was also really into as a teenager, much like at AIC. Um, and I still, I mean, obviously, <laughs> I still dig them a lot, although I'm not too big into their later stuff. After the album I'm about to show, I'm aside from a few songs here and there, I'm not the biggest fan of. But they started out really cool, kind of weird. Um, but um, that would be um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, um, yeah, not into the later stuff all that much. Uh, just, I don't know. It, they just like went into a more mainstream direction and it just yeah not all not really that into it but but back whenever they were like just a funk rock band they kicked ass and um i mean even blood sugar sex magic which that was like their first like mainstream album but it was still chili peppers it was still funky and um my favorite is actually this one, uh, One Hot Minute, the follow-up, which a lot of people don't like because John Fershante left and then Dave Navarro from Jane's Addiction came in. But I love this album, actually. I think it's really awesome. Um, although my favorite song is actually from uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic, that'd be Suck My Kiss because that song, is, that song fucking kicks ass. But... Um, but uh, but yeah, good band, good band. Um, I need to get the first four albums because I only have this and Blood Sugar. But um, but yeah, um, yeah, Chili Peppers. They're my number fifty three. Coming, excuse me, coming at number fifty two is a band you most likely haven't heard of. Um, although I will say this band. This happens to be the director, Edgar Wright. This is actually his favorite band. And if you are familiar with his films, then you have heard this band because they were, they were, um, they are in, uh, most of his films. And, uh, they did that awesome song from Baby Driver, uh, Bell Bottoms. That'd be the John, Sp shit, the John Spencer Blues Explosion. Uh, yeah, this band is absolutely insane. Uh, John Spencer himself, just a fucking lunatic of a, of a musician. Um, this guy has a lot of energy and just not only in his voice, but his stage presence and whatnot. Like I, I watched a little bit of their live stuff and it, they are pretty crazy. Um, Musically, they're really a badass, though, um, and um, it's like kind of blues rock, but mixed with punk, and there's just a lot of energy, um, like very little lyrics, uh, a lot of the time, John Spencer doesn't really sing all that much, he just like screams, a lot of times he says blues explosion, like in every song, <laughs> and, um, but it's, but they're still just really awesome um i don't think they're around anymore unfortunately but it would have been really cool to see them live because i felt i just feel like they'd be one of the one of the best live bands to see ever just because of their energy even if you don't really necessarily like the music it, it would still be cool to see them but i do like their music too um my favorite though is actually a song that does where he does actually sing in and that is um Leave me alone so I can rock again. Uh, that one's that that's a awesome song. Bell Bottoms is great too, but but yeah, um, yeah. John Spencer Blues Explosion is my number fifty two, and finally the last band I'll talk about in this uh, video. My number fifty one is a punk band. Uh, they were very influential on pop punk. Uh, special bands like Green Day and Blink-182, which I don't have those bands uh, because I'm not a big fan of them. I'm not really a big fan of pop punk, but I do like this band. Um, they were pop punk, but they're also hardcore punk, too. Uh, that'd be The Descendants. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're a punk fan, then you should know who The Descendants are. But, but, um, <clears throat> but The Descendants 
really cool punk band. Uh, Cade was really into them at one point, I remember. Uh, this was actually his CD I remember, that he gave to me later. But, um, but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, you know, they were hardcore punk, but also pop punk. They do go back and forth. Uh, not, they wouldn't like mix it or anything. Uh, well, maybe they did it sometimes, but you know, they go back and forth with those two genres and that's what I really liked about them, especially on this album. Like the first side is just hardcore punk and then second was pop punk and, uh, yeah, side B and that, I I think that's really cool. This is a great album, by the way. I don't want to grow up. One of my favorite punk albums and one of my favorite punk bands, um, personal favorite from this album is uh my world <laughs> that that song kicks ass and uh yeah descendants kick ass um oh i should mention i really like the singer milo um who is actually supposed to be that guy um milo he, he i like i like his image i like his voice his image is it, it reminds me a lot like um which i wonder if he was based off of him he could have been um but like um uh, it reminds me of uh, Jace. What's his name? Jason Siegel. It reminds me of Jason Siegel's character in SLC Punk, where he was like a nerdy looking dude, but he was like the toughest guy in the movie. And that's kind of how I get with Milo as well, because he was a nerdy looking dude. He didn't look like he would have been in a punk band. Uh, but you listen to the hardcore songs, and he, like, just the way he fucking screams and shit, and it's pretty crazy. So that's kind of what I get, uh, what I think about, um, when I think of Jason Siegel and, um, SLC Punk, he was probably maybe inspired by him. There's a good chance, but anyways, though, but descendants, they're my number 51. So yeah. All right, there we go. There is uh part two of my, um, of my uh, top 100 favorite music artists. Uh, so, all right. Um, in the comments, give me some of your favorite music artists. If you don't want to do top 100, that's understandable. Um, just, you know, say some of your favorites or whatever, top 10, whatever. Um, and which ones are your favorites I mentioned in this video, uh, if you have any. So, okay. Um, so, please like, subscribe comment share hit the bell and uh look out for part three uh next wednesday or, yeah next wednesday um that'd be from uh 50 to 26 so yeah okay uh see you guys then all right peace